a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Megalodon Megalodon, meaning, big tooth, is an extinct species of shark that lived approximately 23 to 2.6 million years ago, during the early Miocene to the end of the Pliocene. It was formerly thought to belong to the family Lamnidae, making it closely related to the great white shark. However presently there is near unanimous consensus that it belongs to the extinct family Otodontidae, which diverged from the ancestry of the great white shark during the early Cretaceous. Its genus placement is still debated, authors placing it in either Carcaracles, Megosalacus, Otodus, or Procarcuridon. Scientists suggest that Megalodon looked like a stockier version of the great white shark, though it may have looked similar to the basking shark or the sand tiger shark regarded as one of the largest and most powerful predators to have ever lived. Fossil remains of Megalodon suggest that this giant shark reached a length of 18 meters. Their large jaws could exert a bite force of up to 110,000 to 180,000 newtons. Their teeth were thick and robust, built for grabbing prey and breaking bone. Megalodon probably had a major impact on the structure of marine communities. The fossil record indicates that it had a cosmopolitan distribution. It probably targeted large prey, such as whales, seals, and giant turtles. Juveniles inhabited warm coastal waters where they would feed on fish and small whales. Unlike the great white, which attacks prey from the soft underside, Megalodon probably used its strong jaws to break through the chest cavity and puncture the heart and lungs of its prey. The animal faced competition from whale-eating cetaceans, such as Leviathan and ancient killer whales, which likely contributed to its extinction, as it preferred warmer waters. It is thought that oceanic cooling associated with the onset of the Ice Ages, coupled with the lowering of sea levels and resulting loss of suitable nursery areas, may have also contributed to its decline. A reduction in the diversity of baleen whales and a shift in their distribution toward polar regions may have reduced Megalodon's primary food source. The extinction of the shark appeared to affect other animals. For example, the size of baleen whales increased significantly after the shark had disappeared. Naming According to Renaissance accounts, gigantic Triangular fossil teeth often found embedded in rocky formations were once believed to be the petrified tongues, or glossopetrae, of dragons and snakes. This interpretation was corrected in 1667 by Danish naturalist Nicholas Steno, who recognized them as shark teeth, and famously produced a depiction of a shark's head bearing such teeth. He described his findings in the book The Head of a Shark Dissected, which also contained an illustration of a megalodon tooth. Swiss naturalist Louis Agassiz gave this shark its initial scientific name. Cacarodon megalodon, in his 1843 work Recherches sur les poissons fossiles, based on tooth remains. English paleontologist Edward Charlesworth in his 1837 paper used the name Carcarias megalodon. While citing Agassiz as the author, indicating that Agassiz described the species prior to 1843, English paleontologist Charles Davis Sherborne in 1928 listed an 1835 series of articles by Agassiz as the first scientific description of the shark. The specific name Megalodon translates to, big tooth, from, and Omicron Delta Nu Tau Omicron Sigma, tooth. The teeth of Megalodon are morphologically similar to those of the great white shark, and on the basis of this observation, Agassiz assigned Megalodon to the genus Cacarodon. Though Megalodon is an informal name for the shark, it is also often informally dubbed the giant white shark, the megatooth shark, the big tooth shark, or meg. Evolution While the earliest Megalodon remains were reported from the late Oligocene dated to around 28 million years ago, competing figures still exist as to when it evolved, such as 16 Maya and 23 Maya. It is believed that Megalodon became extinct around the end of the Pliocene, probably about 2.6 Maya. Reported Pleistocene Megalodon teeth, younger than 2.6 million years old, are considered to be unreliable claims. 
Megalodon is now considered to be a member of the family Otodontidae, genus Carcaracles, as opposed to its previous classification into Lamnidae, genus Cucaridon. Megalodon's classification into Cucaridon was due to dental similarity with the great white shark, but most authors currently believe that this is due to convergent evolution. In this model, the great white shark is more closely related to the shark Isaurus hastalis than to Megalodon, as evidenced by more similar dentition in those two sharks. Megalodon teeth have much finer serrations than great white shark teeth. The great white shark is more closely related to the Mako shark, with a common ancestor around Formia. Proponents of the former model Wherein Megalodon and the great white shark are more closely related, argue that the differences between their dentition are minute and obscure. The genus Carcaracles currently contains four species, C. auriculatus, C. angustidens, C. chubutensis, and C. megalodon. The genus was proposed by D. S. Jordan and H. Hannibal in 1923 to contain C. auriculatus. In the 1980s, megalodon was assigned to Carcaracles. Before this, in 1960, the genus Procarcaridon was erected by French ichthyologist Edgar Cassia, which included those four sharks and was considered separate from the great white shark. It is now considered a junior synonym of Carcaracles. The genus Paleocarcaridon was erected alongside Procarcaridon to represent the beginning of the lineage, and, in a model wherein Megalodon and the great white shark are closely related, their last common ancestor. It is believed to be an evolutionary dead end and unrelated to the Carcaracles sharks by authors who reject that model. Another model of the evolution of this genus, also proposed by Cassia in 1960, is that the direct ancestor of the Carcaracles is the shark Otodus obliquus, which lived from 60 Maya to 13 Maya during the Paleocene and Miocene epochs. In this model, O. obliquus evolved into O. exuaticus, which evolved into C. auriculatus, and then into C. angus tidens, and then into C. chubutensis, and then finally into C. megalodon. The evolution of this lineage is characterized by the increase of serrations, the widening of the crown, the development of a more triangular shape, and the disappearance of the lateral cusps. The genus Otodus is ultimately derived from Cretolamna, a shark from the Cretaceous period. Another model of the evolution of Carcaracles, proposed in 2001 by paleontologist Michael Benton, is that the three other species are actually a single species of shark that gradually changed over time between the Paleocene and the Pliocene, making it a chronospecies. Some authors suggest that C. auriculatus, C. angustidens, and C. chubutensis should be classified as a single species in the genus Otodus leaving C. megalodon the sole member of Carcaracles. The genus Carcaracles may be invalid, and the shark may actually belong in the genus Otodus, making it Otodus megalodon. A 1974 study on paleogene sharks by Henri Capetto erected the subgenus Megasolacus, classifying the shark as Otodus megalodon, along with O. chubutensis. A 2006 review of chondric thighs elevated Megasolacus to genus, and classified the sharks as Megasolacus megalodon and M. chubutensis. The discovery of fossils assigned to the genus Megalolamna in 2016 led to a re-evaluation of Otodus, which concluded that it is paraphyletic, that is, it consists of a last common ancestor. But it does not include all of its descendants. The inclusion of the Carcaracles sharks in Otodus would make it monophyletic, with the sister clade being Megalolamna. There was one apparent description of the shark in 1881 classifying it as Salash Manzonii. Appearance One interpretation on how Megalodon appeared was that it was a robust-looking shark, and may have had a similar build to the Great White Shark. The jaws may have been blunter and wider than the Great White. And the fins would have also been similar in shape, though thicker due to its size. It may have had a pig-eyed appearance, in that it had small, deep-set eyes. Another interpretation is that Megalodon bore a similarity to the whale shark or the basking shark. The tail fin would have been crescent-shaped, the anal fin and second dorsal fin would have been small, and there would have been a caudal keel present on either side of the tail fin.
This build is common in other large aquatic animals, such as whales, tuna, and other sharks, in order to reduce drag while swimming. The head shape can vary between species as most of the drag-reducing adaptations are toward the tail end of the animal. Since Carcaracles is derived from Otodus, and the two had teeth that bear a close similarity to those of the sand tiger shark, Megalodon may have had a build more similar to the sand tiger shark than to other sharks. This is unlikely since the sand tiger shark is a cringy form swimmer which require faster movement of the tail for propulsion through the water than the great white shark, a thunniform swimmer. Statistics Due to fragmentary remains, there have been many contradictory size estimates for Megalodon, as they can only be drawn from fossil teeth and vertebrae. Also, because of this, the great white shark is the basis of its reconstruction and size estimation, as it is regarded as the best analogue to Megalodon. Various size estimates exist for Megalodon. In 1973, Hawaiian ichthyologist John E. Randall estimated that the maximum length attained by C. Megalodon was about 13 meters, while in the 1990s, marine biologists Patrick J. Chambry and Stephen Papson opined that C. Megalodon may have approached a maximum of around 24 to in total length. Gottfried and colleagues asserted that C. Megalodon could have reached a maximum of 20.3 meters in total length. Nowadays, the commonly acknowledged maximum total length of C. Megalodon is about 18 meters, with the average size being 10.5 meters, compared to the maximum recorded sizes of the great white shark at 6.1 meters and the whale shark at 12.65 meters. It is possible that different populations of megalodon around the globe had different body sizes and behaviors due to different ecological pressures. If it did attain a size of over 16 meters, it would have been the largest known fish that has ever lived, surpassing the Jurassic fish lead sixties. Mature male megalodon may have had a body mass of 12.62, and mature females may have been 27.42. Given that males could range in length from 10.5 to and females 13.32. A 2015 study linking shark size and typical swimming speed estimated that Megalodon would have typically swum at 18 km per hour. Given that its body mass was typically 48 mount, which is consistent with other aquatic creatures of its size, such as the fin whale which typically cruises at speeds of 14.52. Its large size may have been due to climatic factors and the abundance of large prey items, and it may have also been influenced by the evolution of regional endothermy which would have increased its metabolic rate and swimming speed. Since the otodontid sharks are considered to have been ectotherms, and megalodon was a close relative to them, megalodon may have also been ectothermic. Contrary to this, the largest contemporary ectothermic sharks such as the whale shark, are filter feeders, implying some metabolic constraints with a predatory lifestyle. That is to say, it is unlikely that Megalodon was ectothermic. Estimations Gordon Hubble from Gainesville, Florida, possesses an upper anterior Megalodon tooth whose maximum height is 7.25 in, one of the largest known tooth specimens from the shark. In addition, a 9 by Megalodon jaw reconstruction developed by fossil hunter Vito Batucci contains a tooth whose maximum height is reportedly over 18 cm. The first attempt to reconstruct the jaw of Megalodon was made by Bashford Dean in 1909, displayed at the American Museum of Natural History. From the dimensions of this jaw reconstruction, it was hypothesized that Megalodon could have approached 30 meters in length. Dean had overestimated the size of the cartilage on both jaws, causing it to be too tall. Johnny Randall, an ichthyologist, used the enamel height to measure the length of the shark, yielding a maximum length of about 13 meters. Tooth enamel height does not necessarily increase in proportion to the animal's total length. Shark researchers Michael D. Gottfried, Leonard Compagno, and S. Curtis Bowman proposed a linear relationship between a shark's total length and the height of the largest upper anterior tooth. The proposed relationship is, total length in meters minus times, UA maximum height. They had estimated the average height, based on the slant height of the largest tooth discovered, for large female megalodon to be 15.6 meters. 
though larger teeth may exist. In 2002, shark researcher Clifford Jeremiah proposed that total length was proportional to the root width of an upper anterior tooth. He claimed that for every one centimeter of root width, there are approximately 1.4 meters of shark length. Jeremiah pointed out that the jaw perimeter of a shark is directly proportional to its total length, with the width of the roots of the largest teeth being a tool for estimating jaw perimeter. The largest tooth in Jeremiah's possession had a root width of about 12 centimeters, which yielded 16.5 meters in total length. In 2002, paleontologist Kenshu Shimada at DePaul University proposed a linear relationship between tooth crown height and total length after conducting anatomical analysis of several specimens, allowing any sized tooth to be used. Shimada stated that the previously proposed methods were based on a less reliable evaluation of the dental homology between Megalodon and the Great White Shark, and that the growth rate between the crown and root is not isometric, which he considered in his model. Using this model, the upper anterior tooth possessed by Gottfried and colleagues corresponded to a total length of 15 meters. Among the specimens found in the Gatun Formation of Panama, other shark researchers used this method and calculated a maximum length of 16.8 meters for a specimen, and for another a total length of 17.9 meters. This result appears to be an error within the matrix, and the length of this individual is actually 19.6 meters. Teeth and bite force The most common fossils of Megalodon are its teeth. Diagnostic characteristics include a triangular shape, robust structure, large size, fine serrations, a lack of lateral denticles, and a visible V-shaped neck. The tooth met the jaw at a steep angle, similar to the great white shark. The tooth was anchored by connective tissue fibers, and the roughness of the base may have added to mechanical strength. The lingual side of the tooth, the part facing the tongue, was convex, and the labial side, the other side of the tooth, was slightly convex or flat. The anterior teeth were almost perpendicular to the jaw and symmetrical, whereas the posterior teeth were slanted and asymmetrical. Megalodon teeth can measure over 180 mm in slant height and are the largest of any known shark species. In 1989, a nearly complete set of megalodon teeth was discovered in Saitama, Japan. Another nearly complete associated megalodon dentition was excavated from the Yorktown formations in the United States and served as the basis of a jaw reconstruction of megalodon at the National Museum of Natural History. Based on these discoveries, an artificial dental formula was put together for megalodon in 1996. The dental formula of megalodon is, as evident from the formula, megalodon had four kinds of teeth in its jaws anterior, intermediate, lateral, and posterior. Megalodon's intermediate tooth technically appears to be an upper anterior and is termed as A3, because it is fairly symmetrical and does not point mesially. Megalodon had a very robust dentition, and had over 250 teeth in its jaws, spanning five rows. It is possible that large megalodon individuals had jaws spanning roughly two meters across. The teeth were also serrated which would have improved efficiency in cutting through flesh or bone. The shark may have been able to open its mouth to a 75 degrees angle, though a reconstruction at the USNM approximates a 100 degrees angle. In 2008, a team of scientists led by ASRO conducted an experiment to determine the bite force of the great white shark, using a 2.5 meters long specimen, and then isometrically scaling the results for its maximum confirmed size and the conservative minimum and maximum body mass of megalodon. They placed the bite force of the latter between 110,000 to 180,000 newtons in a posterior bite. Compared to the 18,000 n bite force for the largest confirmed great white shark, and 7,400 n for the placoderm fish Duncalosteus. In addition, Roe and colleagues pointed out that sharks shake sideways while feeding amplifying the force generated, which would probably have caused the total force experienced by prey to be higher than the estimate. Internal anatomy Megalodon is represented in the fossil record by teeth, vertebral centra, and coprolites. 
As with all sharks, the skeleton of Megalodon was formed of cartilage rather than bone. Consequently most fossil specimens are poorly preserved. To support its large dentition, the jaws of Megalodon would have been more massive, stouter, and more strongly developed than those of the Great White, which possesses a comparatively gracile dentition. Its chondrocranium, the cartilaginous skull, would have had a blockier and more robust appearance than that of the Great White. Its fins were proportional to its larger size. Some fossil vertebrae have been found. The most notable example is a partially preserved vertebral column of a single specimen, excavated in the Antwerp Basin, Belgium, in 1926. It comprises 150 vertebral centra, with the centra ranging from 55 mm to 155 mm in diameter. The shark's vertebrae may have gotten much bigger, and scrutiny of the specimen revealed that it had a higher vertebral count than specimens of any known shark, possibly over 200 centra. Only the Great White approached it. Another partially preserved vertebral column of a megalodon was excavated from the Gram Formation in Denmark in 1983, which comprises 20 vertebral centra, with the centra ranging from 100 mm to 230 mm in diameter. The coprolite remains of megalodon are spiral-shaped, indicating that the shark may have had a spiral valve, a corkscrew-shaped portion of the lower intestines, similar to extant lamniform sharks. Miocene coprolite remains were discovered in Buford County, South Carolina, with one measuring 14 cm. Gottfried and colleagues reconstructed the entire skeleton of megalodon, which was later put on display at the Calvert Marine Museum in the United States and the Iseco South African Museum. This reconstruction is 11.3 meters long and represents a mature male. Based on the ontogenetic changes a great white shark experiences over the course of its life. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?